So, in this last lecture of the week, we shall be looking at some more placement techniques and see that how they work. Okay. So, this is lecture 14. So, we start with an interesting algorithm which is proposed by Melvin Brewer. This is a placement technique which, which uses partitioning technique. Like the idea is very simple in concept. See, normally what we do? We do circuit partitioning, we create the different modules of the blocks, then we place the blocks. But here we say is that when we have a netlist, we repeatedly do the partitioning in such a way that at one stage each of the partitions is small enough, so that we can directly place it in a cell. So, partitioning and placement are going hand in hand. Okay. So, if you have a two dimensional area for placement, which is typically the case for a full custom design style or a gate array design style, then you can use this kind of a placement strategy very effectively. So, this is a placement strategy, which uses partitioning technique. So, given circuit netlist is repeatedly or progressively partitioned into two or more sub circuits, two sub circuits at every stage, because you are using one partition, one slice in every iteration. So, given a circuit, if you make a slice, you will get two circuits from there. So, at every step you are doing some kind of a you can say by partitioning divide it up into two, but a several such partitioning you are doing repeatedly you are doing a sequence of by partitioning until you reach a stage where each of the pieces that you create can be directly placed. Okay. So, some of the salient ideas is that at every level of partitioning, so you use vertical and horizontal slices, so that the available layout area is partitioned into horizontal and vertical subsections alternately. So, what I mean is something like this, suppose I have a layout area rectangular in nature. So, suppose I start with a vertical partition like this, I divide it up into two pieces, then I use a horizontal partition, I divide it up into four pieces, then I again use let us say a vertical partition like this. So, two more pieces are created, let us say again a vertical partition like this, two more pieces are created, then again a horizontal partition like this, a horizontal partition like this, this we go on repeating. Now, this sequence of this horizontal and vertical partitions can differ. So, there are many such partition strategy, two of them we shall be seeing through some examples, but the idea is this you go on partitioning a given rectangular space using vertical and horizontal slices repeatedly to create the partitions at the end you will be getting these partitions which can be directly placed placed on the silicon floor. So, the basic idea is that the process is continued till let us say each of the partitioned sub circuit is a single gate, which has a unique place on the layout area. Well, here you can relate this problem to the gate array placement. In a gate array, you have an array of gates here also we are doing partitioning, 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 we arrive at gates. So, each of these gates can be placed into, into one particular gate in the gate array. right? Now, Brewer has proposed several sequences of the horizontal and vertical cuts, these are called cut oriented sequences. Now, when this cuts are proposed you see there is an important point. See in this diagram, so I have shown these lines well as if I am cutting the circuit in the middle, but it is not exactly like that. 
So, what is done is like this, I am showing, I am illustrating for one step. Let us say, let us take a very small example, I have some gates. Let us take a very small example. Let us say I have a circuit netlist like this. Now, in this diagram I have said that I start with a vertical cut in the middle, but actually this middle is just for illustration purposes. It is not exactly the middle I am cutting, what I am doing you see I have a 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 10 gates. So, let us say I am using Cunningham lean bipartitioning algorithm to get a good partition of these gates. So, so I do not know which is the best partition, let us say this is a good partition let us say. So, I have 5 gates on this side, I have 5 gates on other side. So, my objective is to minimize the size of the cut, cut size, number of lines which are cutting. Now, in this case it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines are cutting, so cut size is 5. Okay. So, so, here whenever I am showing these lines as if they are dividing it up into 2, it is not blind division, but you look at the cut size minimization sub problem, you cut it in such a way that the cut size is minimized. Right. So, so in each of these cut oriented sequences at every step, you are actually trying to minimize the cut size. Now, two alternate cut sequences uh, are means, means shall be illustrated here. In fact, Brewer illustrated or stated a few more, but we are just illustrating two of them with example, so that you know exactly what is being done. So, this is the example block level netlist we are considering for illustrative purposes. Well, these each of these circles can indicate a gate, right. And we are assuming that the thick edges, there are four thick edges, five thick edges, have a weight of one, they are critical in some sense, and the thin edges have a weight of half 0.5. So, when you make a cut, you will have to estimate the cut size accordingly, right. So, in the first method, which is called quadrature min cut placement, the idea is to divide the layout into four parts with two cut lines, one vertical, one horizontal, both passing through the center. Just like I have illustrated earlier, given a layout you cut vertically, cut horizontally you get four pieces. Now, when you make a cut as I said, you do the cut considering the cut size minimization problem, okay. you can use the Cunningham line algorithm for the purpose. Okay. Now, this division procedure is recursively applied to every quarter, see means after these two lines you have divided the whole layout into four pieces. Now, each of these four pieces you again subject to horizontal and vertical cuts. So, you go on repeating till each of the small pieces are of the desired size. Okay. So, let us see with an example. So, this was the example block level netlist. So, we start with this. So, I am showing the solutions only. Huh? So, here these dotted line means I am starting with a vertical cut and in fact, this is the best vertical cut. If we apply Cunningham line algorithm, this will be the best vertical cut, which is dividing the netlist into two parts. So, these two parts are shown by these two pink rectangles. So, I have already divided the netlist into two partitions. Now, each of these partitions you are now subjecting to a horizontal cut. 
again you apply kerning handling algorithm. So, this will be the best cut, this will be the best cut. So, after doing this cut, you divide, you have already divided the net list into four parts shown by the pink rectangles. So, again you start with a vertical cut on the left side. So, these two rectangular blocks will be divided into two and two. So, let us say the cuts are like this. So, the partitions created will be like this like this m i and e a. Now, apply a vertical cut on the right side. So, these two blocks will now get divided similarly. So, they will become like this and like this. Similarly, you apply a horizontal cut on the top to divide these four rectangles and a horizontal cut on the bottom to divide these four rectangles. So, finally, you arrive at 16 rectangles where each rectangle contains only one gate or one node. So, this is my desired final state. So, you see that initially my graph was haphazard, but after completing it I have got n here, I have got b here, I have got c here, I have got g here. You see initially b was here, initially c was here, but they have got into a position which indicates minimization of the cut at every step, because c which was here, this was moved here at this step, this was moved here in this step and it remained there. Okay. So, so it is not that I am blindly cutting, the gates are also moving around during the process and this is the final placement I, I get. right? So, this is the first method. Now, the second method is called recursive bipartitioning min cut placement. Again, you see here the method is similar, but the sequence of cut lines are a little different as I will show with an example. This again is a recursive division using horizontal and vertical cut lines, but I shall be explaining with the help of the example that, that how. So, that same example I take. So, I start with a vertical cut dividing up into two rectangles, but instead of a horizontal cut across the layout, I am cutting only one of the halves. So, I am cutting this, so I get this, then I am cutting the right half and then I am getting this, then I am cutting vertically one of the four, this one, then I cut this, then I cut this, right then I cut this and finally, well here I am showing in one diagram, I cut this, I cut this, there are 8 cuts I am showing here together. So, finally, again I get a partition. Now, one thing you see, you go back to the previous design, you see the final, this is your final partition. You see this partition does not look to be a very good partition, because you see there are several wires which are running pretty long n to o, o to p, okay. there are then j to k, there are many wires which are pretty long. So, if you compute the wire length, if you take the Manhattan distance, then you can see very easily that this solution is worse as compared to what I get here. You see here the connections are very localized, only other than two or three of the connections. So, all of them are between neighbors. So, this method gives better solution as compared to the other one, but of course, this has happened by chance. You cannot say that for any net list that I give you, this method will give you the best solution better than the other one. So, Brewer proposed four or five such sequence of cuts and you can apply them and see which one is giving the better result and select that better one. Okay. This was the basic idea. Fine. Now, there is an associated problem with any partitioning based placement algorithm and this can be solved by using a process called terminal propagation. So, 
this I shall be illustrating with a simple example. The idea is like this direct use of partitioning algorithm can increase net length as the first method showed us. This can also increase congestions in channels in some areas a lot of lines will be there. This also was seen in the first method. Okay. So, to avoid this a method called terminal propagation is used which I shall be illustrating with an example where the concept of a dummy terminal is used which is propagated towards the partitioning boundary. Okay. So, I will be explaining with the example huh? then, then we will understand what is written here. Let us take an example like this a very simple example two blocks this A and B they are connected. So, if I use a simple partitioning based heuristic like in the first method. So, I go on partitioning other blocks I am not showing I am only showing A and B. So, as you go on partitioning it might so happen that A will land up here and B will land up there. Okay. So, connecting A and B will involve a long interconnection line okay, which means a long delay, but terminal propagation concept is something like this that when you partition a layout using a horizontal thing you see this this a b was connected you are doing a partition. So, when you do a partition you see that this one wire or one net was cutting. So, what you do you introduce a dummy terminal at the partitioning junction. So, when you take the two partitions out this dummy junction there will be two copies of it, but one thing you remember that these two dummy junctions actually represent the same net. So, when you move or cut the other blocks and compute the cost. So, if you move this dummy junctions too far away that cost is also taken into account. So, you are not allowed to move B or A too far apart like here it shows these two dummy terminals will always remain closer to each other which will also make A and B closer to each other. Okay. So, this is just a very simple illustration I have given, but actually in a practical case the terminal propagation process is quite complex because the net can be pretty complicated large number of blocks large number of interconnection lines. So, there will be large number of dummy terminals. So, again there are a lot of heuristics that are used here. Okay. Fine. So, here we will look at another constructive placement algorithm which is fairly simple. Now, we had seen earlier in our last lecture that the force directed placement algorithm can also be used in a constructive sense where you can place one block at a time find its zero force location and place it there that way you can make the clusters or the partitions grow. So, you can have a much simpler approach here this is called the cluster growth algorithm you use some kind of a bottom up approach. So, what you do suppose I have a partially completed layout at, at any stage. Suppose there are already a percentage of the blocks already placed the other blocks you have to place. What you do is that you place one of the block initially you call it the seed the other blocks are selected one by one and placed closer to the blocks depending on the connectivity that how they are connected to the other blocks that creates the partitions like you see I am giving an example. Let us say I have a net list like this there are 6 nodes let us say the connection weights are like this. Let us also give some names to these 
vertices A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, let us suppose I have a partition which I am creating or a cluster which I am creating where I have already placed A and D. So, similar method we have discussed earlier also. So, where I have already placed D which is most strongly connected. So, what I am saying is that among the remaining one I place them one at a time possibly depending on their connectivity. B is most strongly connected. So, maybe in the next step I shall be placing B. Next step may be I shall be placing C because it is strongly connected to the rest 8 and 6. Also, here there is another link I missed it. Let us say this is 3. So, this is 3. So, now if my partition size constant is 4, let us say we stop here. So, A, B, C, D, these 4 already have been put in one partition. Now, we repeat it for the other. There can be other vertices, you repeat and you try constructing the second partition. So, each partition can, can be having a limit to the maximum number of vertices that you can place. You do it, you then move on to the next partition. So, so as if this is like a cluster, you are starting with an initial point, you are growing the cluster up to some maximum allowable size. So, after you are done with this, you move to the next cluster. In this way, you create the partitions or the placement of the blocks. Okay. So, layouts produced using this kind of cluster grow algorithms are typically not good, because it does not directly take into account the interconnection details exactly how they are interconnected and what is the in connection length and so on, just the number of connections are taken into account. But this method has a, a some utility like it can be useful for generating initial placement, which can be used in iterative improvement algorithms like simulated annealing. Like for simulated annealing, we start with an initial placement. Now, we can use this cluster growth algorithm which is pretty fast to create that initial placement. So, instead of creating the initial placement absolutely randomly, we use some intelligence to create a reasonably good placement, then we give it to the simulated handling tool. So, it can improve upon that. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, this is the pseudocode for the cluster growth algorithm. So, B denotes the set of blocks that are to be placed. You select a block S, you call it a seed from B. There can be some heuristic, you select the block which is maximally connected, that can be your seed. You place S in the layout, remove S from B. So, while B is not empty, repeat, select a block x from b, place x in the layout and remove x from b. Well, this is as if you are completing the entire thing, but there can be another restriction as I said which is not shown here. So, each of these clusters can have a maximum size. So, once that maximum size is reached, you can stop and you can start by selecting a seat for the next cluster. So, in this way several clusters can be formed right C 1, C 2, C 3. Okay. Now, lastly let us make some brief comments on performance driven placement. You see we shall again come to this performance driven issues later. So, when we talk about uh, the timing analysis and other related issues. Now, the issue here is that the delay at the chip level is quite important and it plays an important role to identify the critical paths, which in turn can determine the clock frequency, which in turn can determine the overall performance of the chips. 
and this delay often is due to interconnections. Bad wiring or bad placement can lead to large delay at the chip level. Now, as the blocks become smaller and smaller, blocks mean the transistors you can say the transistors are becoming smaller, the chips are also becoming smaller. So, now interconnection delay has become a major issue, because now the gate delays and the interconnection delays are almost become becoming comparable. So, earlier the gate delays were much larger. So, you could afford to ignore the interconnection delay, but now you cannot right. So, for high performance circuits and chips the placement algorithms will allow interconnection of the nets where some timing constraints may be there. I can say that you route in such a way that your maximum delay should not exceed some delta value okay, that can be specified by the user. So, the algorithms broadly can be classified into two classes one works on a net by net basis. So, you recall what is a net? A net is a connection of pins which have to be connected, they belong to the same means equipotential net in that sense. So, in the net based approach here we try to route the nets to meet the timing constraints individually on a net by net basis we do not consider the paths like what I mean is that let us say I can have a scenario where let us consider a small circuit at the level of the gates. Let us take this. So, here if you look at this, this set of wires this 1, 2, 3, 4 they form a net because this pin here, this pin here, this pin here and this pin here they are equipotential. So, we consider this net individually, we try to reduce the delay of this net the maximum delay from the output of this NAND gate to the input of these NAND gates, we try to reduce this delay, but we do not consider the path like from my input to my final output what is the total delay, I am not considering it totally, I am looking at it net by net basis. Similarly, if here I have this going here again, so I will be having another net out here, there will be another net here. So, I will be trying to minimize the delay of this net like that on a net by net basis we shall proceed. So, the timing requirement for each net has to be decided and usually some kind of a timing analysis tool is available which generates bounds on the net lengths which must be satisfied during placement. Like for example, let us say I want that my circuit needs to work at some particular clock frequency. So, you can make an analysis and you can predict that well to make my circuit work at this particular clock my maximum net length can never exceed this, if it exceeds this then this requirement may be difficult to meet. So, this kind of a constraint can be there. The other approach may be you consider paths from input to the output critical paths. You look at the total delays along the paths and see whether the critical paths are violating some clock timing constraints or not. And you try to place the blocks in such a manner that the path lengths particularly the critical paths they do not violate the timing constraint. Not only that some of the paths which might not be critical initially, but after you have placed them maybe some other path has now become critical. You should make sure that such criticality of the paths their increasing of delay should not adversely affect the timing constraint, they should be met at all times.
Now, we shall be looking at these things later when we discuss uh, the static timing analysis and, uh, and such related issues. So, with this we have looked at uh, the various placement algorithms. Now, in this week we have looked at the initial problems of physical design, the partitioning, floor planning and placement. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. So, in the next lecture we shall be starting our discussions on routing. Thank you.